Wicked is one of Broadway's longest running musicals, and decades later, the costumes remain iconic. Tony Award winning, in fact. Here's Beth Stevens with another edition of Building Broadway. Thanks, Tamsin. I'm here at the Gershwin Theater to check in with Wicked's Tony winning costume designer, Susan Hilferty. So Susan, we're here at the Gershwin Theater. 20 years later, here we are, Wicked is still running and still a sold out show. How does that make you feel? It may, it's pretty astonishing because I remember when we were gathered in this very lobby back 20 years ago, fretting about whether or not it would get an audience, whether or not it was going to survive. And I don't think it was clear to anybody it would have the kind of legs that it has, the show is still as powerful as it was when it first opened 20 years ago. How has Wicked changed your life? You know, I, I always say that Wicked came to me at exactly the right moment in my career, meaning that the kinds of designs that I created for Wicked, five years before, I wouldn't have necessarily had the power or strength to, to have imagined those and later it, it would have been something else. So I think the way for me, Wicked changed my life is it gave me the opportunity at exactly the right moment to move into a kind of storytelling that I love to do, but that I was able to use all the artisans that I knew across, New York, across everywhere to create this whole new world. When you were first starting work on Wicked, when you were first thinking about your approach, tell me about the freedom you had to create a world that doesn't exist. That this takes place in Oz, this takes place in a imagination. I believe that every show that I design, I'm creating a culture and a world. Whether or not it's like Wicked or Into the Woods where you really are imagining every element of the world, or I'm doing a Waiting for Godot right now, and it still is complex to say, what is the culture of this world? What are the, how do people behave? What do they do? I looked at the Edwardian times, which is the time that the original Wizard of Oz book was written. So that gave me a stopping off point, but I also knew animals talk. So if, if you lift off um, from there, I imagined a chunk of earth that's thrown out into the ether. So there's roots of that time, but have been changed in different ways. A lot of it's also in the language. You hear the beautiful lyrics and the book and the music and the way the music sounds. And that leads, gives me all the ingredients that let me design and create a world. So here we are in the Alphabet dressing room. So let's see the costume we're all thinking about, which is Alphaba's black. We call her the Wicked Witch at the moment Wicked that she becomes oh, the, the Wicked, Wicked Witch dress. The Wicked Witch yes. dress. Yes. The idea was really always having a comparison between Alphaba and Glinda. Mm -hmm. Alphaba's from the earth and Glinda's from the sky. So in every moment of their costuming as they go through being schoolgirls at uni and then traveling um, to their, their witch nest, was for me always to remember to reconnect to the earth and the sky. So when I look at this, it reminds me of me looking at coal, looking at mica, looking at things that come from the earth. It was always important for me that Alphaba was firmly planted on the ground so that even her shoes in the opening shiz are about her being sensible. She fixes her hat, she's got her glasses, she's of the earth. There's beads that have been added, the, all the different fabrics. It is weighty and it feels like it's from the earth. You can see how many different colors we included in, in the making of the skirt. But if you look inside, it's all clean so that it doesn't catch on, the, um, the, on any shoes and catch anything. So it's really all clean on the inside. So now we're in Glinda's dressing room and this dress is literally off the floor, so we're thinking about something a lot lighter and airier than Alphaba. Exactly. Well, one of the ideas for Alphaba is that she's from the earth, but when we get to Glinda, that she's from the sky, and which is why it should feel like it's light and effortless. The truth is, because it's got so many sequins on it, it's actually quite heavy. It's got something that the, and if you lift it up, 
and just see how it's, many layers there are is. in terms of the, the petticoat layers. It goes on and on. So it takes a lot of structure to make it feel like it's just got a lot of air going on. Inside. It's a true illusion. Yes. And one of your wardrobe people said there are over 68,000 hand-sewn sequins. Yeah. Every sequin is sewn on by hand. It's so funny because in the show she says ball gown and I feel like this is what we all imagine now is this ball gown. If you're a fashionista, you definitely see the Dior influence yeah. from the Dior dresses. So that was important for me that everybody know that Glinda shops from the Dior <laughs> of Oz. Um, but the other thing that's so beautiful about how we make magic, when Glinda comes in in the very beginning, she flies down in the bubble. But because of that, this dress is actually her safety harness. But so the inner structure, instead of being the delicate Dior corset, is actually strong enough to hold a safety harness. So she's always, always protected. So let's talk about the most iconic piece to me for Fiero, the pants. The pants. Well, the pants, the, all of Fiero's journey was a discovery as, as for all of the ideas of the show. So, but I knew that I needed to present Fiero as the bad boy, that somehow he arrives and into this university and then leads everybody to a party, to um, being naughty, being, just being not what we think um, the good, the young good man should be. Right. My research all about the, the pants actually had to do with riding clothes, the fact that he was playing polo. So this is all his shoes, the what pants, else do the waistcoat. Do to play polo? Exactly, yeah. polo was part of their world. Okay. I knew that by holding on to polo, it comes with a physical effortlessness. So when he arrives, you're just conscious of his physicality, but also there's just something, even though many people don't know what a polo outfit is, but they go, oh, this is a, and there's something about it that has power. What do you want someone to know if they've never seen Wicked? If they're just walking in fresh, they're sitting down to their seat, what do you want them to notice? One of the things that I love about Wicked is that when we started, we knew we were telling the story of a, a characters that most everybody we knew had seen in watching the movie of The Wizard of Oz. What's amazing for me now is that there are many people who have never seen the movie. And or we go to other countries and they don't know the movie. So what I want people to feel, and I totally believe it's true because it's been on for 20 years, is that the relationship between the two young women where they, they have conflict, they disagree, they learn about themselves, and then in the end, they change for good. I love that part.